How many people, I want you to raise your hands. How many people are familiar with the gradual release of responsibility? The direction instruction model. I do, we do, you do. Raise your hands high. Look around. Now, I want you to take a moment because a lot of people use this model. Take a moment and tell your neighbor, where did this model come from and why was it invented or used? So turn and talk to your neighbor, where did this model come from and why was it initially used? I give you a moment. All right, come on back, come on back. So now, you've had an opportunity to turn and talk to your neighbor. Raise your hand high if you know for a fact where this model came from. Look around. A lot of people use this model not really knowing where it came from. I'll give you a little background on it. A lot of people are gonna look in the bottom left hand corner of the screen and say, oh, it came from Fisher and Frey. Great, yes, Fisher and Frey, but what does that mean? So Fisher and Frey originally created this model as a literacy model. That's why it works for direct instruction. But then when you really do the research, then this model came, they got the model from Pearson and Gallagher in the 70s. And guess what Pearson and Gallagher used it for? A literacy model. So over time, some principal, some administrator saw this model and say, oh, we're going to roll this out whole school to everyone to use. But it's problematic because when you think about this model, all the onus is on the teacher to do the sense making. The students don't have to do any sense making. They just need to be able to follow something that they were told during the classroom structure. I know some places they take the model, they want to flip it upside down. You don't have to start with the I do. You can start with the you do. Some people turn it to the side, turn it all around. No matter how you turn it in mathematics and science, it's a bad model. Point blank, period. Because our goal is to build upon the experiences students bring into the classroom. You saw the previous model. The previous model said what impacts student achievement? Instructional practices and student experiences. If we think about this quote by Thomas Carpenter, students bring into the classroom a wealth of knowledge. Our job is to build upon this knowledge. That's what we need to be doing and that's why we started implementing high cognitive demand tasks within the classroom structure. Because every student comes into the classroom with something. I agree that something varies, but they come into your classroom with something. How do we build upon that something? As opposed to when we use that direct instruction model, saying you're a blank slate, you pretty much know nothing, I got to teach it to you. What kind of sense does that make?